today we are going to talk about those people who usually get skin itch after taking shower and it's very important for us to define and describe this situation because it will now tell us how we can be able to treat this condition because we have various ways of treating and they are all geared toward how this condition came by because we have various ways this happens. Now we have three categories of people and by category I mean those who usually react with a hot water those that react with cold water and those that usually react with both and uh, the whole of this condition um, is divided into two the first one is called aquagenic ulticaria and then we have aquagenic pruritus now they are almost similar only that uh, when it comes to urticaria this is pure allergic to water this is being now allergic to water and there's also physical difference between the two whereby you're going to find that in pruritus you're not going to have anything physical showing uh, you have this condition like for example when it comes to urticaria you're going to have uh, hives on your skin and these hives they are the reddish inflammation marks on your skin this it's not going to show any physical sign, but this one will show hives. Now, urticaria is very, very rare. So most of the cases we usually get is pruritus. And now let's go to the treatment. One thing you have to understand is there is no known cause and there is no known cure for this. But we have treatments which are working and this is what we are going to look uh, into in this video. But there's a high correlation between those people with uh, this underlying condition called polycythemia vera, which is of a production of red blood cells. And how you relieve this condition in them is by making them donate their blood and that blood is discarded or maybe used for other purposes other than donating to other people. Now, when you have this condition, you have two that chance of getting aquagenic pruritus because two that of those people with this condition will have that now if your skin itch is coming from aquagenic pruritus which is because of a polycythemia vera now you first of all need to maintain this condition the way we've said that you donate or you you remove much of your blood to reduce your hb which is ineffective at transporting oxygen so you try to reduce that load you're going to fix this skin itch so first of all if you have this underlying condition you go see your physician and uh, they're going to aid them uh, devise a way they can be able to reduce this hb your red blood cells how they can be able to reduce them in your system that's one way of um, treating this now let's go to the most simpler ones the first one is in case you have allergy and this allergy might take several forms might be you have an allergy to the water that you're going to take shower with either because it's hard water or maybe it's water that contains chlorine so in case you change that it might affect your condition here it might become better or maybe worse now you need to like take keen note of exactly what's working for you for you to apply that but you are not through you might be using products which are reacting with your skin and um, the same way you're also going to get that skin itching case maybe the soap that you're using are more aggressive or maybe they have different ph or they're aggressive at taking the oil taking the, the oil on your skin away that might trigger that because Sometimes for those people who usually have dry skins, now taking away that oil might trigger your skin uh, and the nerves around them. And we are going to see how you can be able to fix that in our next point. And um, it might also trigger that. Now, you're still on allergy. Now, in case maybe you're using a soap, try to not use any soap. Just use pure water and see if you're going to get the same reaction. So we say that you can react with water, you can react with the soap or whatever product that you're using to uh, take shower or whatever you're using to scrub your body with. Now, in case it's one of them, the simpler thing will be just changing them or you continue using them. Now, there's another thing. If you are, if the water is what's causing your allergy, now, I'd want you to do this. One, use antihistamines. Like, uh, let's say cetrizine. Now, this cetrizine, you take it before taking shower. So by the time you are going to the shower, you have already absorbed uh, the contents or the active compounds in that drug into your blood so it's already 
there. So when you take shower, they are going to inhibit the action of histamines in your body and you're not going to have those. That is in case you have an allergy. And this is how you know that you're allergic to one of them. If you're not going to have those symptoms, it means that either you're allergic to water, the product that you're using, either the soap or the shower gel, or maybe what you're using to scrub your body with. And uh, either fixing them, that is if um, the reaction is serious, but if it's mild, there's one thing and one very good trick that I usually encourage people to use. In case you have, and this applies to most other allergies, in case you have an allergy to something, um, try to continue exposing your body to the same allergen for a continued period of time. That is, and this is a big disclaimer, that is if it's mild. If you're getting those um, severe episodes of this hypersensitivity, don't try to expose your body again. Just try to avoid the allergen. But if it's mild, continue exposing your body until you gain something we call tolerance. So your body will uh, gain tolerance towards the allergen, which will be either water, whatever you're using to scrub your, uh, your body with, or the soap that you're using. This will be something that you need to be patient with because it takes a little long time. So you continue using, or you continue showering with the same water or whatever thing that you're using for a continued period of time until the symptoms continue going down, down, down until they disappear. Now, that's about allergy. The second one is um, using something like um, oil on your skin. You just uh, use baby oil or neut neutral oils on your skin before taking shower. So you just apply that oil on your skin and then you go take shower. And this will help those people usually suffer from dry skin when they take shower. Now, this, this oil might not necessarily be now applying oil. You might also use a shower gel that contain moisturizers. Something else that I've seen working is um, trying to increase the pH of the water that you're using. Now, you do this by adding baking soda. Now, when you increase, uh, when you add baking soda in the water that you're going to take shower with, you're going to increase the pH, and when you do this, you are going to make sure that the water you're using is not acidic. And this has um, proven to be beneficial to most people. Now, still on allergies, sometimes you might find that uh, when you're taking hot showers, you're not getting those symptoms. Now, this is the reason. You have mast cells in your body and on your skin, and they are very responsible for production of so many other things, and one of them is histamines. And when you take hot shower, they are going, yes, to release the histamines, but they are going to be depleted uh, in a period of 24 hours. So when you take hot showers, you're going to deplete all those histamines. And this means that in those 24 hours, the mast cells are not going to have those histamines. Meaning that if, for example, um, you take showers after two hours or three hours, you know, even if it was a cold shower, you are not going to have the symptoms because you don't have... Um, the histamines and this means those people were allergic to that cold water in case you have another remedy that you have forgotten to mention here and usually work for you tell us in the comment region so that we also get to learn from you and this will extend the conversation from now this video see you in the next one